Hello Captains, welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online on our free-to-play account here. Um, the sixth anniversary is going on right now, and if you watched my last video, Boldly They Road, I explained that I will be getting the free Tier 6 Crinum Science ship for the anniversary event on this character. So it's just a matter of, you know, waiting to get it over time, of course, and going in every day and doing the Omega Stabilization Daily, uh, which you will note I have been doing. Um, I also did the patrol, or the party patrol once as well, just to get it done on this character. So I've done the Stabilization Daily and the party patrol, and I'll be doing the Omega Molecule Stabilization every day until I get enough vouchers to buy the ship. Currently I'm at 80, but the mission that I'm going to play today is going to take us up 400 more because we're going to play Time and Tide today. Time and Tide is the featured episode for this anniversary. It is currently um, allowable to be played by anybody from Lieutenant Commander Rank 10 all the way up. In the future, when they put this into the whole mission category in the correct spot, this will end up going after Stormbound in the Future Proof uh, storyline. So that means it will not be playable to level 60 uh, once they integrate it into the storyline. And that'll be, you know, uh, after the anniversary is over. Then it'll come right down here and it'll be a level 60 mission. But for right now, anybody level 10 and up can play it. Uh, for the uh, for the rewards and for the vouchers and whatever else So because it's a special event a special anniversary event and this mission is out And if you are on a free-to-play character, you would likely play this uh, As soon as it comes out anyway to get the rewards and whatever else it comes with I will play it on this character But that means we are playing it a bit out of order from how it will be once it's put in place finally anyway um, I just wanted to let you all know that. Um, I am looking forward to this mission. I have played it on my primary account, and it is a very good mission. Going to seem a little out of place on our character simply because there are a lot of things we haven't done yet, like with the Iconians, for example. And this makes reference to things with the Iconians. Something has happened, and it deals with the Iconian storyline but we haven't got there yet as a character so the story's gonna be a little out of place just kinda keep that in mind the real the real reason why I'm playing this mission though is to get those 400 vouchers cuz that's a big deal we have been contacted by the Federation from the 29th century their temporal integrity commission is charged with protecting the timeline from factions who might want to change history Considering our recent experiences, we feel the need to better understand the rules of time travel. However, it's important we don't know too much about the future, so we have decided to designate one representative to learn what we need to know. Given your record, you were the logical choice. You were to rendezvous with the USS Postok. Her captain will give you a more thorough briefing upon arrival. Travel to the Kiana system in the Delta Quadrant. Now, obviously, we haven't met the Delta Quadrant yet on this character, so it says players below level 50 may reach the Kiana system directly by traveling to the Dyson Sphere Gateway near the Jurette system in the Beta Quadrant. And we're going to get skill points, expertise, a uh, our weekly reward, which is either a tech upgrade or a spec point, 400 of the anniversary prize vouchers, and that's going to help me big time towards getting the ship some uh, random dilithium ore and then a new space set they've got here which is polaron based and it is part of a new set called chronometric calculations but it is a it's basically a polaron science build is what they've got going here after looking at it in depth this is a polaron science build not really going to benefit us. In fact, I'm not using Polarons, I'm using phasers. I am using the new quad phasers from the Defiant or the Sao Paulo refit. So I have to use phaser energy, not Polaron. So this set is really not going to help me in any way. Uh, I will go ahead and get the pieces for it and so forth, but it's not going to be a space set I'm going to use on this character because it just doesn't fit my build at all in any way. <laughs> so let's accept that. 
Uh, one, a couple of new things to go over before we continue. Since the last video, I used some energy credits and upgraded our weaponry so that we're just a little bit more powerful on the ground. Uh, remember, I had a Mark VIII Romulan uh, disruptor, basically. I have now upgraded to this Voth Anti-Proton High-Density Beam Rifle. It is Mark XI, but it's very rare, and it's got two crits and a kickback. Uh, so this should be really nice. Um, a very big upgrade from what I had before. Uh, I wanted something anti-proton. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't afford the... They have a Herald Staff you can actually buy from the exchange. Um, it's not like the low buy one. It's a little different, and it is anti-proton damage, but I didn't have the energy credits to afford it. Uh, there's also other anti-proton weapons like Sonic anti-proton, but that's really only good against the Undine. Or, th excuse me, the Tholians. The Tholians. Sonic weapons are against the Tholians. And we've got the Borg coming up. So I bought this weapon knowing what's coming with the Borg. This gives me a knockback, and that's always a pleasure with the Borg because they will assimilate you or uh, slow you down or whatever. So I like the knockback. And then there's a 50% chance on critical hit to reduce the inter enemy's damage output by 16.7% for 10 seconds and then plus 50% critical severity. So these th this should knock quite a punch. And uh, I bought this with the Borg coming up in mind. As for our bridge officers, I did upgrade them to Sonic weapons simply because they were cheap. These uh, Mark 12, actually, not even 11, this is Mark 12 rare Sonic anti-proton wide beam pistols. They were only like 4,000 energy credits a piece they were super cheap. So I went ahead and equipped them. The DPS was higher on them uh, than, than other ones I was looking at. So this, this is going to work out good for our bridge officers. Not that we need sonic weapons. Again, we're not going to be going up against Tholians, but uh, any, it was a good deal in the exchange. It was a good deal to get a Mark 12 rare weapon. So that's what I got. All of them have exactly the same thing. They're all exactly the same. And that's all I've done so far. Just upgraded our ground weapons. Here's what the Voth one looks like. So quite unique. It'll be much more powerful than I had before, and it should help us when we get to the Borg missions after I play Time and Tide. But for now, let's go play Time and Tide and get this uh, anniversary event mission done. We're going to New Kittimer. But first we have to get to the Delta Quadrant, so we're gonna go to the Dyson Sphere Gateway, which we haven't gone to yet, but we'll be able to start the mission from here, from there. One other thing to note is um, I took off each piece of Jim Hadar gear and like brought it over and uh, did the just clicked on the upgrade I didn't do an upgrade on it but I just clicked on the upgrade to see if it would upgrade anything it actually changed the icon on my Jim Hadar armor now it has a different icon but um, the levels all stayed the same someone said it might increase my stats if I do that so I did do it on all of them just in case I also did it on the ship parts but it didn't increase the mark level so uh, that's obviously something you know down the road down the road, I'm really not sure what space set we're going to end up with. Right now, the Jim Hadar is the best because that's what we the best we have access to. But when we get to the Breen missions, there's a Breen set, there's a Breen deflector engine, and uh, and uh, shield. So I can compare the Breen set with the Jim Hadar set and see which one will be best at that time. But then moving on forward, there are even more. There is There are missions, actual just plain old missions that will give you some nice sets. There's one out there called the Soul Defense System, which is pretty good for a cruiser, or even an escort, because it has some defensive capabilities on it. Uh, so that is another set we could get just through playing missions to compare with. And uh, there might even be another set out there uh, that I've forgotten all just through missions, not even doing the reputation. But once we do get into the reputation, 
and start getting all the components for that, um, those will be the best space sets. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in order to do those reputations, I'd have to do the STFs to get the marks to do them, and we're nowhere near ready to do that. So it's going to be a while on the reputation, so I'm just going to have to go with mission rewards for now as far as space and ground sets go. So right now, it's Jim Hadar until we get something better. Oh, that is the wrong one. Oh, let's, here we go. I, I clicked on mission circles within circles. That's the wrong one. Okay, begin time and tide. And it looks like we're going to go straight to ground. Eliza Flores, Colez, Travel Savar. That'll work. Please report to the USS Postdoc. Sure thing. So here we are aboard a uh, 29th century Wells class starship. Very nice. I've always thought, however, that they need more than just this one tiny window. I mean, come on, it's the future. Need big windows. It's a pleasure to see you again. I'm glad you were selected as your time's representative. I can't imagine a better selection. Of course, I already knew you were going to be chosen, but that doesn't change my appreciation. Your recent experiences with time travel have begun a new phase of development, and a perilous one at that. Understanding the rules of time travel is of vital importance. Tell me about it. Starfleet personnel are strictly forbidden from directly interfering with historical events, and are required to maintain the timeline when possible. We're also restricted from revealing too much about the future. These principles have served Starfleet well. Now that the time travel genie is out of the bottle, it'll be hard to get it back in. The tech will spread through the galaxy, and species after species will learn the secrets of time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Time travel can be a very seductive tool. Many would use it benevolently to save lives, worlds, entire civilizations. Many more, however, would use it for conquest, vengeance, even genocide. Unsupervised tampering with the timeline can be disastrous. Good intentions or not. Prior to the Accords, reckless time travel led to a great war. It nearly undid existence itself. In its aftermath, a coalition was formed to stabilize the timeline and enforce its protection. Your alliance, the Federation, the Klingon Empire, and the Romulan Republic formed the historical basis of this coalition. It's vital that the Alliance holds together. In timelines where the Alliance fails, let's just say it wasn't pretty. In other branches, the Coalition grows beyond the Alliance, and eventually forms the Galactic Union. The Union proposes a treaty to protect the timeline, and restrict the use of time travel. We call this treaty the Temporal Accords. Mm -hmm. It might be the most important event in known history, I would like to take you to witness the signing of the Accords, so you can see for yourself what the work of the Alliance will lead to, and how important it is to future civilizations. Of course, you must promise to be circumspect in your reports and conversations with others when you return. We don't want to create any disruptions or paradoxes. Sounds Are you like ready fun. to visit the future? I'm ready, let's go. Future, here we come. New Kittimer, 2769. Wow, very nice. Okay, here we are on New Kittimer in the 28th century. Let's talk to Captain Walker. Here we are. Since you're from the past, I'll be your chaperone during the event, hopefully protecting you from any temporal incidents. Purely procedural, of course. You've already demonstrated your ability to remain silent about things you aren't supposed to know. Right on. Okay, let's talk to uh, the attendant. Welcome, gentle being, to the signing of the Temporal Accords. Your biosigns aren't listed on our register today, 
I'll need to... Wait. I know you. I wrote a paper about you in classical history class at the academy. I must say, you look much younger than your hollow images. Wait, what year did you come from? Uh, 2410. Oh, that explains why you look so young. Well, you sure have an eventful future ahead of you. <clears throat> Forget I said that. I'm not supposed to say things like that. To be honest, I'm still getting used to the new temporal regulations. They can be a little confusing. Anyway, the TIC crews are scrubbing the hall for anything that might cause a paradox if visitors from the past, like yourself, encounter them. It will be just a few moments. Hmm. Perhaps you would like to chat with some of our other guests here in the lobby. I believe they have all been cleared for trans-temporal interactions. I'm sure you'll have plenty to talk about. I'm sure I will too. Okay, let's talk to uh, Philip Cray. Greetings, friend. How may I help you? Who are you? Where do I start? I'm 157 years old. But that's only because I spent 90 years caught in a temporal distortion. Back then, I was serving as an ensign under Captain Bateson on the USS Bozeman. After that, integrating back into Starfleet was... Uh, difficult. So much had changed. Some of my shipmates joined temporal investigations. Their first-hand knowledge of past events was quite useful. Seemed like a way to make a difference. So that's where I ended up as well. So, if you don't know, uh, the Bozeman is from that TNG episode, Cause and Effect, where basically they end up ramming into the Enterprise a million times and blowing up. <laughs> That's where he comes from. Why are you here? Same reason as you, I'll imagine. To witness the signing of the Temporal Accords. Usually, Temporal agents watch holo recordings of the event. But the three of us were given special dispensation to come and view the Accords personally. Perks for graduating at the top of the class, I suppose. Mm, I suppose. Now we have a um, protester. The Nakul are here to protest the signing of these unlawful biased Accords. Why? The Tholians ravaged our homeworld thanks to the Federation's ineptitude. In one dark moment, my people were scattered throughout the stars. All we were, our history, our way of life, was nearly lost. And when we needed the Federation the most, we were denied. Terrorists, they called us. Criminals, the dregs of the galaxy. These words, these deeds will never be forgotten or forgiven. Are they still upset about that incident? I'm not sure what the tragedies of the past have to do with today's events. Today, the Federation and their lackeys come to tell the galaxy which timeline is best and what they'll do to keep it that way. But who are they to dictate such terms? To tell us that their history is more important than ours? So you would change the past despite the risk? You could undo your own existence. My existence? My existence has been nothing but hardship and pain the life of an exile. I'd gladly sacrifice it to restore my homeworld and prevent the mass exodus of my people. Don't tell me you wouldn't do the same were our places reversed. I'd resist the temptation. Too much could go wrong to risk it. Attention all guests. The main hall is now open. Please make your way to your seats. Interesting dilemma, though, that they have. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just here to view the signings. What do I know? It's a Talaxian. Well, well, one of our very special guests. It is so nice to meet you. I am Wixit, your humble master of ceremonies for this historic event. Quite an honor, wouldn't you say? So exciting. The ceremony is about to begin, so you should find your seat. But I'd love to chat with you after the signing. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, um, now it looks like we've got all of these people to talk to. A lot, actually. Well, let's do it. Let's talk to the Dominion. I am honored by the Founders and pleased to observe this most historic event. Although the Dominion was not greatly affected by the development of time travel, we have an interest in safeguarding the time stream. Mm, that's good to hear. And you? Jolan True. 
You are from the past. From before the time the Romulans joined the Federation, I'll wager. How strange all of this must be for you. The entire galaxy unites in preserving the timeline. This is truly a momentous day for all. Indeed it is. Let's talk to the Tholian. The Tholian Assembly has decided to support the Accords. We are concerned that a rogue individual or species could disrupt our development. The Accords do not go far enough. We want to end all time travel. For any reason, we will continue to lobby for change aggressively. Should the Union fail to preserve the timeline, the Assembly will succeed by any means necessary. That is all. Wow. Um, Tholian diplomacy at its finest. Let's talk to the Breen. Every Confederacy has lost a fight at present, rather than a memory of the past, the history of the future. Sure, I like your approach. Um, the Deferi. Well, the Accords promise to safeguard the time stream for us all. I can't help but ponder the opportunities for temporal abuse that will remain after they are signed. I fear great imbalance could occur, despite the very good intentions of all the signatories involved. You make a good point. Um, who do we have here? Let's talk to the Zindi. The Zindi are no stranger to temporal affairs. The tragic conflict with Earth in the 22nd century and our manipulation by the Sphere Builders are matters of deep shame for us all. We support the Accords with the hope that they will prevent such tragedies from this day forth. A worthy goal. Uh, the Cardassian. I must say, I am privileged to witness this historic event. Truly, it is a singular honor. I'm humbled, as I'm sure you are as well. Indeed. And, oh, we got a uh, another Nakul here. The Nakul are not here to sign these accords. We have already been victims of time-traveling aliens. But somehow this incursion into the timeline has been overlooked. Perhaps because of its importance to the founding of the Galactic Union. We proposed an amendment to restore our home world in the timeline, but it was rejected. Therefore, we are here, with all eyes of the galaxy upon us, to point out the hypocrisy and unlawfulness of these accords. Delegates and honored guests, your attention, please. The signing ceremony is about to begin. Please take your seats. I do have more delegates to talk to. These are optionals. So I don't have to do them, but... Uh, to uh, to be a completionist, I will. Let's talk to the Federation Ambassador. Hmm, your uniform. 25th century, correct? You're definitely a visitor from the past, and an honored one at that. Welcome to the 28th century. I hope you'll enjoy seeing what your work and sacrifice has wrought. Thank you for the honor. So apparently in the 28th century, the Federation Ambassador is a Klingon. Boy, we sure have come a long way for that. Let's talk to the Lucari. Greetings! Uh, pardon me for saying so, but you look very familiar. Have we met before? Wait! I remember you from my history studies! You saved our home world! There's a statue in your honor in the capital city on Lucari Prime! Oh, wait! That, that's already happened for you, right? Oh, good. Woo! That'd be just my luck to cause a paradox here, today! Can you imagine? That would be a little awkward. Okay, Ferengi? These accords are going to provide quite the opportunity for our historical studies of economic matters. I hear the Grand Nagus is going to formally announce several new temporal rules of acquisition soon. I hope at least one of them covers going back in time to beat someone to a deal. Uh, hopefully in a way that prevents such activities. <laughs> uh, and the Orion Observer. I am reminded of a quote from Ancient Earth. And when Alexander saw the breadth of his domain, he wept, for there were no more worlds to conquer. An interesting perspective. Uh, the Orions sure have become philosophical. Philosophical? Philosophers? 
Let's talk to the cooperative. The Borg have a checkered past when it comes to time travel, particularly where the Federation is concerned. Thankfully, we've had the chance to make amends. The cooperative is proud to be a part of today's proceedings. I don't know who the voice actor is for this, but it sounds like Jerry Ryan. It sounds like a deeper voice of hers, like she lowered her voice and spoke more monotone or something. Sounds kind of like her, though. Okay, uh, the Kabali. We Kabali are quite thankful to see the Accords go into effect. Many who disagree with our customs could be tempted to return to a point in time where those customs could be disrupted permanently. Indeed. Well, I guess we've talked to everybody, so let's take a seat. Sit down. Representatives from dozens of species have gathered to witness this historic event. It looks like they are getting ready to begin the formal signing. Oh, joy. Of course, this is largely ceremonial. The negotiation... Wait, ruh, ruh, there ruh. is some kind of disturb... This oppression will not stand. The time stream shall be free. We will liberate the galaxy from the tyranny of the Temporal Accords! We shall wipe the stain of the Federation from history! Quick, get the delegates to safety! Everyone, stay where you are! Uh-oh. <laughs> Nobody thought to bring weapons? The Krenim have grabbed the delegates and are holding them hostage in some nearby offices. This is damn peculiar. We're facing a major temporal flux here. The hostiles have neutralized embassy security, but it looks like they weren't expecting us to be here. It's up to us to rescue the delegates. What's even more, um... What's even more crazy here is the fact that uh, we haven't even met the Krenim yet in our playthrough. Uh, you know, where we are in the storyline. We've never met the Krenim. We've never met Noi, who we're about to meet. We've never met anything. Any, everything that's going on right now, basically, we're just playing it a, a little bit out of order, but that's okay. Let's check out our new weapon here. It's a Voth, uh, Voth weapon. Voth anti-proton. I like it. It's doing a lot of damage. Watch out! More Krenum beaming in! I'll take it. More Krenum! Neutralize them as quickly as possible! We need to save those delegates! I can't fire. <laughs> there we go. Can anybody hear us? The Krenim are holding us hostage in the embassy offices. Please, anyone, help! Okay, sure. Let's go save everybody. The Krenim are holding us hostage! Requesting immediate assistance! Hang on! We're on our way! Cooperate, and you won't be harmed. Resist, and your safety cannot be guaranteed. Okay, we have uh, the Dominion I Observer. shall live to serve the Founders another day. My thanks to you, of course. Yep.
my world. And now you saved me. I'm beginning to like you. Okay. Finding this quite easy. I'm fighting uh, 28th century technology here. Uh, very easily, apparently. With what I've got. Okay, I guess we gotta go around the other side now. Okay, let's save the it Federation. It was a good day to die. For the Krenum. For the Krenum. Okay, looks like we've got one more section. And, uh, who are you? You're Defari, right? Yeah, Barry. I thought my life path was at an end. My thanks for proving me wrong. You're welcome. This wasn't supposed to happen. History says the Accords were signed without incident. There's no mention of an attack. We should return to our ships and see if we can help with defensive efforts. Okay, beam up. Now we can see how our quad... Excuse me, see how our quad phaser cannons here... Do. Those look like Krenum ships, and they're attacking in force. We've got to stop them before they disrupt the timeline any further. This conference will not continue. I won't abide it. All ships, fire at will. Okay, I'm gonna, no survivors. I'm going to use my new ability Warning. there, Ship and now let's blow them out of the stars. Wow. My, uh, my, I love those cannons, those quad oh, cannons. no, not this time. This time you will not prevail. Taste the bitter dregs of failure. Those quad cannons are pretty nice, gotta say. Let's buff up. I'm taking this one out. Look at all that. Target's shield has failed. Four shields failing. Nice. That was pretty cool. I don't know what he was hitting me with, some kind of time weapon device, but barely affected me. Didn't do much. That was really cool. Alright, moving on. I'll use the anti-proton sweep on him. Warning. Go. Ship is under attack. Warning. Ship is under attack. Target shield has failed. Pretty slick right there. Okay. Answer the Nakul have used the Krenum attack as a cover to attack the temporal sensor array. All our forces are tied up fighting the Krenum. We can't afford to lose that array. 
It monitors the time stream for incursions. If it were damaged, people could travel into the past without being detected. Curious. The Krenim and Nakul vessels have started fighting each other in the confusion. Let's make the most of that, shall we? Sounds like fun. Warning. Ship is under attack. I just have this barrage of uh, cannon fire coming from my ship. I love it. Okay, now let's get to the temporal sensor array. Save it. This is really cool. I like this um, battle up here above the uh, atmosphere of the planet. It's really cool. Whatever kind of power he's using, I love it. I like it. I want it. That was really cool. All right, we saved, we saved the thingy. Now let's go over here and take out this other thingy. This is uh, the KIV Anorax, which technically we haven't met yet. It's in some kind of time bubble thing. I think we'll stay out of it. Probably will be our best bet. timeship project, if memory serves. If you say so, because I haven't met the Iconians yet. <laughs> I see. Something must have disturbed the timeline. And Noi himself, it seems. We need to return to your time to investigate. I'll accompany you, but I cannot interact with anybody from your timeline. Time is of the essence. Are you ready to go? Yeah, we're ready, because um, none of this has really happened for me yet. I just assume this is all taking place in the future after it you does happen. For docking. Okay, you, supervisor. Welcome back to Kiana. We never, hadn't expected to see you again so soon. Never been here to before. What do we owe the pleasure? Um, I have some questions about Noi. Noi? Well, he's been working on some secret project of late. To be honest, he's been more than a little hostile. And that's saying something for Noi. I was about to check in with him. If you would like to accompany me. Lead on. 
So, yeah. Another thing I shouldn't know about yet is this research base. Oh, it's you. I thought I'd seen the last of you after you flew off to your great victory over the Iconians. Mm, well, nope. what do you want? I'm very busy. What are you working on? Come now, you can read, can't you? Access my latest report to command if you want to know what I'm working on. Feel free to waste the time of the charming bureaucrat standing next to you. But I'll thank you to stop wasting mine. Now, if this interrogation is over, I've more important matters to attend to. Good day. Uh, we're not done here, Noi, and w watch what watch your tone with me, woman. <laughs> like I said, more than a little hostile. He's been like this for some time now, and no one's sure why. Well, we have reason to believe he may be plotting treason. Would it be possible to see what he's working treason? on? Treason? Noi? I mean, sure, he's been difficult to work with, but... Oh, I hope you're wrong. Noi has top-level access to everything we're working on here. I don't need to tell you how much damage that could do in the wrong hands. Let me call up his files. Thank you. Hmm. He was working on the Anorax. Wait a minute. It looks like he was accessing the launch protocols and docking clamp. And you're electrocuted. It's a trap! Or a tarp. Either way. It's a, it's a bomb. Someone set us up the bomb. And there it is. And there's another one. There's two ah, bombs. I see you found my farewell gift, Trala. I'm so glad. As for you, I'm taking command of the Anorax now. If you I say so. I can see that bothers you greatly. So will the numerous bombs I've left behind. It doesn't bother me. I don't even know what an Anorax is right now. Um, okay. Disarm the bombs. Because that's apparently something I can do as a tactical officer. And I can do it before they explode. Which is weird. Everyone's running in circles and I'm the one disarming the bombs. They don't even have a destination, they're just running. I guess I did it. Okie dokie. Now revive the supervisor. Come back to life. I command you. Okay, talk. Noi stole the Anorax? I can't believe it. How could he do such a thing? What drove him to betray us like this? Maybe there's a clue in his personal logs. There's only one way to find out. Computer, bring up the research notes and personal logs of researcher Noi. Authorization Trala 23, Victor 6 Sigma. Thank you. Um, now I have to access the logs. Please input your selection below. Mm, that one. Personal log supplemental. We had some visitors from the Alliance today. Noi was rather rude to them, but I managed to smooth things over. This time. Still, he has good reason to be stressed. The war isn't going well. And there's a lot of pressure on him right now. He could be a bit more agreeable, however. Perhaps a peace offering. Those Terran snack cakes he's so fond of with the... What is the word? <gasps> Nougat. I tried to tell him about the baby again last night. But he was so stressed out. I just couldn't add to his burden. Hopefully things will calm down a bit soon and I can tell him. On a positive note, my work is progressing quite well. I believe these logs should now be shielded from any kind of temporal incursion. Hmm. Okay. Please input your selection below. Personal log supplemental. My review of the time capsule files is complete. What I have learned has shocked me to the very core of my being. I had a wife, and she was pregnant. My wife and unborn child were murdered by the Federation and their allies. They devastated my people 
murdered my family and erased an entire species from time and space. I cannot let this stand. This I vow. I shall not rest until I have restored my family or avenged their deaths. Time itself shall be the instrument of my vengeance. Wow, okay. Please input your selection below. Personal log supplemental. At last I have found them. The Tutarians, or rather what they have become. Some of them managed to escape the treachery of the Federation, finding sanctuary in a trans-dimensional void. They are powerful. So powerful that some primitive species worship them like gods. And yet they are trapped in their realm, no longer able to exist within prime space. But I can help them. I can release them from Durant's vial. With these builders at my side, I shall have my vengeance for Clauda. Okay. Please input your selection below. Download complete. Uh -oh. What the? We're under attack! Let me guess. It's Anorax. Noi has returned, and he's made a number of potent modifications to his ship. We could use some help up here with him and his allies. You got it. Another good space battle. I am liking these quad cannons quite a bit. They're really cool. They really add to the firepower. I have been waiting for this for a long time. At last, I take the first fateful steps upon my path of vengeance. Um, but I just saw you. Where did you get your allies? What have you done to the Anorax? As always, your thinking is so limited. For you, it has been moments. But for me, it has been years. Years of planning, building. All to return to this moment in time to end you. Okay, uh, I can't accept oh, that. but it does. <laughs> Believe me. You took them from me. My wife, my unborn child. Time was your weapon then. And it is mine now. With it, I will eradicate your wretched alliance, just as you wipe the Tutarians from history. But first things first, it's time for you to die. Mm, I don't think so. Okay. This is Walker. We've got our hands full with Noi over here, but we'll keep him busy while you defend the station. We could use a hand once it's secure, though. Anorax packs quite a punch. Okay, let's defend the station then. That's our goal. Crinum frigates. Should be pretty simple. some new tricks. This definitely isn't the same Anorax we left a few minutes ago. Okay. So let's go toward that then. taken care of. Let's see, we have Noi himself now to deal with. Looks like we're dealing with some futuristic weapon weaponry as well. Some new kind of time abilities that these ships have or intel abilities or something. I would like to have some of them myself. I 
I guess he's escaping and we're going after him. Admiral, we've been pulled into the time stream. We can't let her escape. Target her engines. Ah, I see. Okay. I can't move. But I can target. Where the heck are we firing? We're firing sideways. <laughs> well, that's a bug. Oh, there you are. I thought we'd lost you. What happened to Noi? Uh, he disrupted our warp field and made his escape in the chaos. Damn. A rogue agent out there with a ship like the Anorax is a big enough problem. But I'm afraid the news gets worse. My science officer tells me that Noy's ship is using Sphere Builder technology. Looks like they're back and with a vengeance. We've got a lot of work to do, but let's take it one step at a time. Let's get you back to the 25th century once you're ready. I am ready. What a mission. All over the place. All right, let's uh, turn this in. Uh, here we go. So, Noi turned against us, huh? This is troublesome. With his theft of the Anorax, he poses a great threat to the galaxy. Sadly, I don't think we've seen the last of him. The surprise actions of the Nakul are also a concern. What could they be up to, I wonder? Regardless, I think you'll agree. The battlefield just got a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, skill points, expertise, we're going to get our feature episode weekly reward, which is either an enhanced universal tech upgrade or one spec point. 400 anniversary prize vouchers, that's going to go toward our anorax, or not our anorax, but our crinum time ship, tier 6. Dilithium ore, choice of weapon, and then more stuff coming in the later weeks. Um, I, I will play this in the later weeks to get these other items as well. But here's the deal. Uh, I said in uh, previously that these weapons really are not going to be useful for my type of ship and build uh, an escort on a tactical character. I'm using phaser energy type, and I want to keep using these quad phasers because I like them a lot. They're going to stick with me as my escort uh, ship build. Uh, so this is a Polaron science build here. These chromoelectric, uh, chrono chronometric Polaron dual heavy cannons, uh, beams. Uh, all, all of the whole set is basically geared toward a Polaron science build. The uh, chronometric calculations, all of it, uh, focuses on, on a lot on auxiliary power and that type of thing. However, I am getting the Crinum time ship on this character, the anniversary ship, and it will need a build. So I might as well get this build to put on that ship. That won't work well on my escort, but it will probably work well on that specific ship. So I'm going to go ahead and actually get the Polaron beam array because I feel that that science ship is probably going to be more of a beam ship and not necessarily a ship I would put dual heavy cannons on. So I'm going to build it up to be like a Polaron science uh, beam ship and I will get the rest of the items as well and I guess I'll play this several times to go ahead and get more of these Polaron beam arrays. And in that way, I will have a build ready for that ship. So that's probably what I'll do, is I'll use the rewards from this mission to build up the Crinum time ship. That sounds, Congratulations. Cool. Specialization point. To begin a brief tutorial that sounds like a plan, system, what I was trying to say. In this message to continue, or click okay. the X in the top right to cancel. A lot of things just happened because we have now hit level 51. So first of all, we have now hit level 51. Yay, congratulations. Woo! I was hoping that would happen because what has now happened is that the intelligence officer specializations, well, all of them actually, the specializations themselves have opened up to us. They are now available. We can now start putting spec points in and getting our character even more buffed 
in space and ground. So there's a little tutorial here. I don't really need to go through it because it's really straightforward. So I'm just going to click off of it because it's really not complicated. They make it sound more complicated than it is. It's really so easy to use. First, you just have to pick a secondary one you want, and a, I mean a, a primary one and a secondary one. So like if you want intelligence officer to be your primary trees, that's primary. You want commando to be secondary, that's secondary. You just select which one you want to be primary and secondary. Then you just start, every time you get a spec point, like I have one right now for hitting 51, I just click the thing and unlock it. It's that simple. So you just have to read what the benefits are and see if you want them. Ultimately, I want all of them. And if you play the game long enough, you can achieve that. It's just a matter of spending a lot of time to grind the game past 60. You know, because every, every time you go a, an entire level, when you hit 60, you'll go an entire level to what would be 61. Then you get a spec point instead. And on and on and on and on. So you just have to keep playing the game a lot. For this character, um, because she's in an escort on a tactical... Uh, I am going to choose pilot as my primary and I am probably going to intelligence may be my secondary that's typically what I do but to be honest with you I would like to see what some uh, ground powers would look like and we still have a lot of ground missions left to do so I will th I think I'm going to keep commando as my secondary right now and then, of course, I can always put spec points into intelligence officer later on, and and I can change. You can change these around at will. So after you put spec points in, you can change your primary and secondary. You know, any time you want, in an open zone. So you don't have to worry about that. So for right now, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to put my first spec I got here into my first pilot position. This is a maneuvering thrusters one. So while at full stop, or if your engines are offline, you are still able to utilize your ship's maneuvering thrusters as if the ship retained a small portion of its base speed and turn rate. Retain 25% of base speed while engines offline, plus 6.5 turn rate while stopped. So that's what that does. And uh, so as I get more skill points, I'll just, I'll just put them in here. That's what I'll do. Um, we don't have a level up or anything like that. I mean, nothing... New. It looks like we do have some new duty officers, however. So I'll take the duty officers. Add them. Okay, we've got Warus. We've got Taga. And we've got Ramona Shamika. An entertainer. Um, we also, from this reward, from just playing this, uh, this mission, we got a weekly reward box. And we can turn it into a universal tech upgrade or a spec point. I'm going to go with a spec point because I know that that's what I'm going to be needing a lot of. So there's a spec point. Uh, I'll go ahead and add uh, this one here. This is Eat My Dust. When attacker fires upon your rear arc of your ship, you gain an attacking bonus to your defense, making your ship harder and harder to hit. When damaged on your rear arc, you gain plus 2% defense for 20 seconds. It can stack 5 times. Triggers max once per 2 seconds. There we go. Those are my first two spec points open. You also get a passive bonus. My passive bonus right now is plus 12% turn rate for having these two things unlocked. So the more things I unlock, I can get all the way up to a plus 40% turn rate uh, just out of having pilot as a, as a uh, primary or secondary. You get that turn rate boost. So that's a really cool other part of specializations that you might not be aware of. So if I click command, uh, Commando, I would get a 5% um, a bonus weapon and melee damage. Intelligence Officer, you get bonus space and ground defense. Command Officer, you get uh, space and ground maximum hull capacity and uh, maximum hit points on ground. So yeah, hit more hit points on ground, more hull capacity in space. So all of these have that passive bonus also added to your ship stats. Cool. Now, of course, we did just get the 400 vouchers. So I've got now 480 vouchers, and I'm just going to keep working on that. And that's going to go toward our uh, Tier 6 Crinum time ship. It's not a time ship. It's just a ship, I guess. It's a, do they call it a time ship? No, they just call it a science vessel. Okay, and let's see what else. We have, of course, our 
chronometric polar on beam array i'll put it in the bank and we'll just we'll just keep saving those up and that's pretty much it um, the mission was a little strange simply because this character hasn't done any of those things that we've encountered that was talked about in that mission um, a lot of those most of those come during the iconian storyline so we haven't encountered that yet so it seems a little foreign now and remember again eventually that mission will be under future proof under stormbound so we did we did kind of play it out of order but it's available now so i wanted to get that out of the way uh, but in the next video we're going to start the next mission series here which is the borg advance and this is going to take us through all the borg missions uh, on this character and note you need to be level 45 to play them we are level 51 so no problemo at all there and that's going to be that that'll be the borg advance and after the borg we'll get to the breen after the breen the solanae after the solanae the delta quadrant and then the iconians and then future proof we got a lot left to do and we're we're already almost max game i mean level 60 is max uh, max level so we're very close to max level and we still have a ton of missions to do. So that's going to be a thing. Uh, anyway, that's about it for now. Stay tuned in the next mission, uh, next episode, and we'll start with the Borg. <coughs>